in this video, I focus on all the craziness, controversy, and history surrounding the burial of and the gravesite of Lee Harvey Oswald, including why was he buried in Fort Worth, not Dallas? Why the cemetery had to accept his body, even though they really did not want to? The strange path of his stolen headstone? Why Oswald's body was exhumed and what they found when they did? Why the headstone for a mysterious stranger appears next to Oswald's? Who is buried in the unmarked grave nearby? and exactly how to find Oswald's grave. Those are all the topics that I'll be delving into in this video. So sit back and enjoy the ride. But first, my name is Tui Snyder. I write books, I give talks, and I do a lot of research, and I love sharing the goodies that I find with you. So let's hit the road. <laughs> On November 22, 1963, President John F. Kennedy was shot in Dallas, Texas. The next day, November 23rd, Lee Harvey Oswald was arrested for killing JFK as well as a Dallas police officer. This violent act stunned the nation. Why had he done it? The next day, while Oswald was being transferred from jail, a Dallas nightclub owner named Jack Ruby walked up, stuck a gun in Oswald's ribs, and shot him. At point-blank range, this shot was fatal. One day later, on November 25th, 1963, both men, the president and his assassin, were buried. Since Lee Harvey Oswald had been a Marine, his mother actually requested that he be buried at Arlington National Cemetery. That's where JFK is buried in Virginia. People were shocked when she made this request. They assumed she meant a cemetery in Arlington, Texas, and they told her that her request was out of the question. Even though Lee Harvey Oswald was shot and killed in Dallas, he ended up being buried in Fort Worth, Texas. This was a real relief to all the Dallas cemeteries. After all, JFK's assassination had rocked the nation and no one wanted to be associated with this killer. Of course, the Fort Worth cemeteries weren't really excited about having Oswald either, but his mother, Marguerite, already owned some plots in Shannon Rose Hill Cemetery. But there is a Texas state law that says if you own a cemetery plot, the cemetery cannot forbid you from being buried there. Oswald's body was transferred from Dallas to Fort Worth as quietly as possible. Even so, it didn't take long before word got out and a crowd gathered outside of Miller's funeral home. So the officials secretly arranged for Oswald to be buried in Shannon Rose Hill Cemetery. To avoid publicity, they used a pseudonym so that even the grave diggers wouldn't know exactly whose grave they were digging, and it worked pretty well. Finding pallbearers was also a bit tricky. I mean, there was the extreme secrecy surrounding this hastily arranged funeral, and the only people present besides the assassin's immediate family were federal agents, police, and a crowd of reporters who had eventually been tipped off, and so they were covering the story. At first, no one volunteered to be a pallbearer. 
But finally, one of the reporters volunteered, and then a bunch of the others followed suit, because reporters are quite competitive. None of them wanted to be scooped somehow by the others. Even several ministers turned down the offer to deliver Oswald's eulogy. A couple of them said, hey, we're afraid there might be some sort of violent retaliation towards us if we do this. Finally, a guy from the Council of Churches named Louis Saunders, he was like the last minute addition. He was even quoted in the paper as saying that he had no more than 20 seconds to prepare his eulogy. His eulogy was quite simple. He quoted the Bible, and then he mentioned that, hey, Mrs. Oswald says she, her son was a loving son, and we have a grieving widow here. It's not our place to judge. Something along those lines. It was very short and sweet. Didn't get onto the crime that he had just committed. Even after Oswald's burial, the police stood guard over his grave to make sure it wasn't uh, defaced in any way or no one attempted to dig him up or cause any sort of problems. Even though the police urged Oswald's mom to move his body to some secret location, she refused. She also maintained his innocence. And the city of Fort Worth was upset too because it cost them $3,000 a month for round-the-clock police guard at the cemetery. On your way to Oswald's grave, you are going to pass by a little dive bar called the Aussie Rabbit. Now this place changed its name in 2007 to Aussie Rabbit, and that is actually Lee Harvey Oswald's nickname when he was in the Marines. And apparently, I've never been in there, I've heard that there are some uh, images inside from the Kennedy assassination, and someone has told me that uh, the bathrooms are labeled as cocks and beavers. I can't substantiate that. I've never been there. But if you go, I guess you can let me know. I'm just going to show you how to find Oswald's grave. Here's me and Larry driving in to the cemetery. Nice paved roads, as you can see, and some stone walls. You're going to take a left, head west. You come up here, kind of go straight. You're going to want to pass by this flagpole and a fountain. It's a fairly modern memorial ground, a lot of flat markers. There are a few fancy mausoleums. Uh, one thing I found a little odd is there are these roundabouts. There will be a, a mausoleum right in the middle of the roundabout. I think we were trying to figure out where to turn for a second. <laughs> I was like, no, we need to keep going west. But um, Shannon Rose Hill doesn't give you directions to any of the interments there. Every cemetery is different. So a lot of people have said, oh, they don't want to tell people where Oswald is. Well, they really don't tell you where anybody is. But that really varies from cemetery to cemetery in my experience. Ooh, see a little squirrel running. Don't hit the squirrel. <laughs> okay, that mausoleum up in front of us, it says Shannon on it. You want to keep your eye out for that because to the left is where Lee Harvey Oswald is buried. Here's a better look. You're going to get out. And you'll see an oak tree and these nice steps. Once again, there's the Shannon mausoleum that you're going to see. Kind of a pink granite, pretty mausoleum right in that center space there. And you'll head up these stairs. And these flat markers over here so that they can just mow <laughs> over them essentially. This is the first time I have visited Oswald's grave where there wasn't 
some sort of bouquet. I was a little surprised. Last time I was here, I think the one next to his for Nick Beef had flowers at it. We do have a single rose and some coins. That, uh, that's a practice that dates back to ancient Greece, paying the ferryman to cross the River of the Dead. I do notice coins quite often on the graves of uh, criminals. I've seen it on like uh, my Machine Gun Kelly, um, oh, Jesse James. Not to say that they don't leave coins on graves of their friends either. Anyway, this headstone that you see here was not the original headstone for Lee Harvey Oswald. Four years after his death, Lee Harvey Oswald's tombstone was stolen in November of 1967. I find it interesting that the newspaper mentions a weeping willow was planted by Oswald's mother at his grave site because I'm sure you noticed in the earlier video footage that there isn't anything growing there today. There was also a flower pot with a kind of strange note that said, Oswald, now other voices speak that louder grow. Who, if legal means to fail, will some names true killers tell? C.D.E. Jr. I'm not sure if that note was left by the people who stole the headstone, but Oswald's headstone was recovered a few days later up in Bartlesville, Oklahoma, of all places. Detectives later revealed that the headstone was stolen by a group of teenagers. Now, the cops kept their names anonymous, and they never pressed any charges, saying that in cases like this, you either go for prosecution or you go for recovery. It wouldn't have done anybody much good at the bottom of the lake. Oddly enough, when Oswald's mom, Marguerite, got the headstone back, she never returned it to the cemetery. Instead, she secretly hid it under the crawl space of her front porch, and there it remained. In December of 1967, Marguerite Oswald replaced her son's headstone with a plain marker. It's pink granite, and all it says on the stone is Oswald. That's the stone that remains to this day. As for Oswald's, original gravestone, and I do have a photo of it and I will show you later, but as for that original headstone, it had such a convoluted history that I'm just going to borrow this graphic from the Chicago Tribune to explain the crazy tale behind this. Now, we're up to the point where it was recovered in 1967 and replaced with a pink granite marker, just a simple marker that we see today. And Marguerite, his mom, hid it under her front porch. Well, in 1981, Marguerite Oswald died. And a couple named Donna, Donald, and Ida Card bought her house. Somewhere around 1985, an electrician was doing some work and he needed to get into their crawl space. And he comes up and he's like, uh, you guys, do you know that you have a gravestone under your house? This was a complete surprise to them. They pulled it out and they found the original headstone for Lee Harvey Oswald. Neither Donald nor Ida Card particularly wanted the headstone, so they moved it to the home of Ida Card's sister. A couple years later, this sister, she gave the tombstone to her son, who was named Johnny Reagan, and it just stayed in his garage 
until she died. And the original owners of Marguerite's house, Oswald's mom's house, they both died. And then Johnny Reagan, who had the tombstone this whole time, he died in 2008. And so the tombstone ended up being in the possession of his wife, who was named Holly Reagan. Sometime in 2010, a man named Wayne Lenzing caught wind of this tombstone. And he owns a museum called the Historic Auto Attractions in Roscoe, Illinois. He bought the stone for who knows how much. It's just an undisclosed amount from Holly Reagan. And it became quite a tourist attraction for him. It's been on display there. Uh, it started in 2011 that it went on display there. Here's what one of the displays looks like at that museum. <laughs> they've got wax figures of Oswald and Jack Ruby, and they're, you know, they've got the photo of when Oswald was fatally shot there in the background. And this is an example of what the kind of thing they have at that museum. Now, remember the people who bought the home after Marguerite Oswald died? The cards? They had a son named David Card, and he owns a bar in Dallas, and somehow, through the grapevine, he found out that Oswald's tombstone was up at this you know, museum in Illinois. And so he approached them and uh, wanted to get it back, and uh, I think there was even some legal proceedings. But after wrestling around with them, trying to get it back, uh, they eventually settled out of court, and as of 2015, the stone has been back in the possession of David Card. Now, the reason he wants it so bad is he really thinks that the Sixth Floor Museum in Dallas, this is a museum where all the Kennedy, it's, it's dedicated to the Kennedy assassination and it's located in the building where the gunman shot JFK from. So he feels that uh, the stone really should be part of their collection. I don't know that it is. I, most I could trace it through the newspapers that I was finding was that David Card had put it up for sale in 2017, and I really don't know what's become of the headstone. So if you know the answer, please let me know in the comments below. I'm very curious about it. And wow, that, that's a very well-traveled stone, isn't it? And here you can see what the original headstone for Lee Harvey Oswald actually looked like. It was rather fancy, much different than what we see today. In 1997, a new grave marker mysteriously appeared next to Lee Harvey Oswald's. Not only is it the same size and shape as Oswald's, but like his, it, there's not much on it. All it has is a name, Nick Beef. Now, up until then, the tangled web of conspiracy theories surrounding that Kennedy assassination bore no mention of a man by the name of Nick Beef. And when people looked into the matter, they really couldn't find anything out about this mysterious Mr. Beef's life, his death, or any possible connections to Lee Harvey Oswald. The story I kept running across claimed that two local reporters or historians, depending on the version, placed this marker next to Oswald's so that visitors could find it more easily. Supposedly, you could go up and ask for the directions to Nick Beef's grave, and they would give it to you. But as I mentioned earlier, Shannon Rose Hill doesn't give out directions to anybody's graves, as far as I'm aware. And it, I don't know, something about that story just didn't ring true to me. Well, finally, in 2013, <laughs> the New York Times got to the bottom of things. They tracked down the mysterious Nick Beef. And it turns out he is alive and well. Nick Beef is the alter ego of a man named Patrick Abaddon, and he describes himself as a writer and a, quote, non-performing performance artist, unquote. Now, Mr. Abaddon grew up in Texas, and he was in elementary school when Kennedy was shot. 
He has vivid memories of seeing the president and the first lady when they first arrived at the airport. And for some reason, he and his mother often dropped by to visit Oswald's grave when he was growing up. In 1975, when Abaddon was 18, he heard a rumor that the plot next to Oswald's was unclaimed. So he dropped by the cemetery and he bought it for himself. He then you know, moved to New York and got married, had kids. You know, he made a whole new life for himself over there. Years later, when Mr. Abaddon's mother passed away, this is 1996 now, he returned to Texas to arrange the funeral. And on a whim, he purchased a grave marker, a pink granite one, and he thought about it. He didn't want to expose his family to any inquiries, so he just used his pen name, Mick Beef, instead of his given name. Now, when the reporter asked him why he had purchased the plot and later why he had purchased that marker, Patrick Abaddon just he couldn't really explain himself. He was a little cryptic. In both cases, he said it was an impulse buy, uh, one with motives that are, you know, not that easy for him to verbalize. Maybe it's even a little mysterious to himself. It was just something important in his life, and he just went ahead and did it. He is also, and I thought this was funny, he has no plans to ever be buried there. When his day comes, he plans to be cremated. So we've got Oswald's grave with Oswald in it, and then next to it, we've got a, a grave that's going to be an empty cemetery plot forever that just says Nick Beef. Meanwhile, I didn't mention this earlier, but when Lee Harvey Oswald's mother, Marguerite, died, uh, it was after Patrick had bought this plot, so she was placed in the plot to the right of Nick Beef, and there's no marker on it at all. So she is in a grave that's uh, unmarked and has a body in it. Meanwhile, Nick Beef is, there's no Nick Beef, and that's an empty one. I just thought that was kind of strange. But the weirdness surrounding Oswald's grave does not end there. In 1977, a British writer named Michael Eddowes published a book called The Oswald File. And in this book, he put forth his theory that a Soviet spy who was posing as Oswald was the man who was actually buried in Fort Worth. To prove this, Eddowes wanted to exhume Oswald's body. But you can't just exhume a body without a court order and permission from family members, and this can be very expensive. Now, Oswald's brother, Robert, did not want his brother exhumed. His widow, however, Oswald's widow, Marina, she wanted the grave opened, and the reason was that she'd been worrying for quite some time that the grave was empty. This was because in 1964, about a year after her husband had been dead, some government agents just paid her a surprise visit at her home, and they asked her to sign a bunch of cemetery papers without really explaining what it was all about. And it had just been bothering her in the back of her mind for a while. So this author, Eddowes, offered to pay the court fees, and Marina said yes to it. So basically, as Oswald's widow, she had the right to say yes or no. And in 1981, Oswald's body was exhumed. And the coffin wasn't empty, as his widow had worried, so that was a relief. I also found it interesting that the original undertaker for Lee uh, Harvey Oswald had a hunch that he might be exhumed one day, so he gave Oswald a double dose of embalming fluid. It didn't take long for the medical examiners to figure out that, yes, the body in the casket definitely belonged to Lee Harvey Oswald. They came to this conclusion because there were some scars and other factors, but the real clincher were his dental records, which they had from his days serving as a Marine. So they were like, without a doubt, this is Lee Harvey Oswald. He was wearing two rings. One was his wedding ring, and then he had a pinky ring on that had a red gem. 
his widow kept the wedding ring, but that pinky ring, she slipped it into the hand of one of the medical examiners, a woman named Dr. Linda Norton, and without saying a word, she just kind of surreptitiously like slipped it into her hand. I guess this was her way of saying thank you for them, um, because this medical exam was quite a, a deal. But she still didn't really want to keep it. She felt uncomfortable keeping this ring. So she slipped it to another medical examiner, and he wasn't really comfortable keeping it either. And so he says he just dropped that ring back into the casket when they reinterred Lee Harvey Oswald. What would you have done? Would you have kept that ring? Even to this day, people regularly leave flowers and other grave goods at Oswald's grave site, but the cemetery clears them away quite frequently, and I'm rather curious what they do with them. Wouldn't you like to know? All of my books, <laughs> back here, all of my books are available on Amazon. But if you would like to get a free book that I offer, then I invite you to go to my website, tuisnyder.com, and you can download the book there. So that's my gift to you. Thanks again for checking me out. Happy